بسم الله آه طبعا في اي وقت آه الصوت يقطع او ما يكون واضح آه في البدايه حاول انك تنبهني بالصوت على اساس انه ما حكون منتبه لل للمكان حق الشاتنج آه على اساس انه ما استفسر في الموضوع ويكون في آه ما تكونوا متابعين في اي سؤال برضه في نفس ال نفس الحكاية ممكن تفك الصوت وتسأل إذا عندك أسئلة أفضل من التشاتنج لأنه زي ما قلت لك التشاتنج شوي بعيد نتابع فيه آه طيب في البداية نشوفكم جميعا بخير وصحة جيدة وإن شاء الله جميع الأمور يعني تكون على أفضل ما يكون آه إن شاء الله We we'll try to make the uh, session quite simple, straightforward. على أساس يعني طريقة جديدة في إلقاء ال. يعني لو بس يا شباب تعملوا ميوت من عندكم إلى لما الوقت يعني الواحد عنده مشاركة ويبغى يسأل سؤال. على أساس بس ما يكون في interruption. <تصفيق> طيب آه. لانه يعني صعب شويه الانتراكشن يكون زي ما هو في الكلاس فبحاول انه يكون يعني شويه سلو و ويعني as simple as possible على اساس انه you can follow ولكن again if you have any questions still you can uh, you can interrupt to uh, let me know تبك uh, ان شاء الله سبب Uh, I understand at least you know by now you know what parasite it is. Uh, well, it's a branch from microbiology. Microbiology usually is divided into bacteriology, which deals with bacteria, and virology deals with viruses, and then parasitology, of course, with parasite and mycology with uh, fungi. Uh, parasite is somehow quite unique. As we will see uh, today, there are some characteristics that make it very different from uh, the other branches. Um, objectives uh, we will start with some definitions, uh, which also we have covered in the uh, introductory lectures, but we will uh, again briefly go over it uh, if you have uh, still didn't. Uh, understand these terms so please let me know um, then we will differentiate it also it's kind of another terms uh, facultative and obligate parasites um, and then we will have seven uh, parasite to cover um, they are quite similar in many of the things particularly the disease uh, They, uh, they implicate. Uh, each one, of course, has a unique uh, characteristic, which usually will be the focus uh, when we ask in the exam. Uh, and this is actually the reason we presented them uh, or we selected them because each one has certain characteristic feature. Uh, the first three, those are intestinal. So intamoeba, histolytica, cryptosporidium, GRD, those all affect the GI system. Uh, and the, the last four here, uh, those are systemic. Systemic means they uh, mostly, or they go to the bloodstream as part of their life cycle and as their uh, part of their pathogenesis as well. Uh, طيب we'll start with the uh, basic definitions of concepts in uh, in parasites uh, so as i said perhaps you uh, most of you already know that parasites means um, any organism that's obtain nutrition and shelter by living on or within another organism so it does not mostly it does not live Uh, in its own, 
it needs some other host اللي هو بنسميه يعني ال ال the place اللي بتوفر يعني provide food and shelter for example uh, human bodies or animals or uh, birds هذه كلها تعتبر يعني considers to be a host for the parasite um, in term of their uh, preference or requirement for this host uh, they can be uh, classified either uh, as obligate or facultative and perhaps you already also remember from the bacteriology what obligate mean and when facultative mean obligate mean uh, it must like it has no other choice other than to live on the host so if we can read here an organism that is completely dependent on the host during its life cycle it can only live inside the host يعني لو الهوست هذا for any reason يعني become extinct قرط خلاص البرسات هذه it's gone and no there is no other way it can complete its life cycle and if the in organism or microorganism could not complete the life cycle then uh, that's the end of the microorganism it's actually one of the uh, approaches in uh, in the uh, therapy of uh, microbial disease <laughs> is actual interruption of the life cycle then you interrupt the disease and you treat the infection so it's obligate it must uh, re rely on this host for nutrition and shelter facultative on the other hand facultative means optional it has it's flexible can live both in the host as well as outside the host freely freely mean it can support itself it can obtain nutrition like for example living freely in the water stream in the soil uh, on food on surfaces of course for a certain amount of time before it you know other hosts accidentally get it back onto uh, to complete the life cycle but at least they have uh, these kind of parasites have the options to live either on a host uh, completely or it can carry on uh, outside the host uh, freely as for example in water on soil and surfaces and so on vector vectors means vehicle something that move something like it carries something on it and move it from one place to another in parasitology vectors means any organism usually insects um, or uh, I mean, in general, arthropod, in general, considered to be a very common vector responsible for transmitting a parasitic infection. Uh, and it comes as two types, mechanical and biological. As the name indicates, mechanical means it's just a vehicle يعني زي كان vehicle is carrying a load on يعني inside the cabinet transfer parasite without biological development تمام يعني it's just a carrier the parasites will accidentally يعني comes on the mouth or on the surface or for what يعني in, in, in wherever a place on this insect and it will be carried freely with no further development in the life cycle يعني whatever the stage that came accidentally on this insect it will be the same until it is transmitted to other place biological vector on the other hand the parasite will multiply multiply uh, before being transmitted to another host تمام يعني inside the vector هذه the parasite will continue the life cycle it will be transferred from one uh, stage to another stage but biological vector is more important تمام? than a mechanical vector for uh, the uh, the life cycle of uh, the post it is uh, without the biological vector 
the parasites cannot complete the life cycle. And as we said, if you interrupt the life cycle, you kill or you interrupt the, uh, the, uh, the pathogenesis or pathogenic cycle of the uh, parasite. Mechanical, it's, uh, it, it, it's not necessary for the life cycle. It can just transmit from one place to another. So when you can think of the uh, water stream as a river, river by itself is a mechanical vector because it transmits all, uh, not only parasites, but all form of microorganism from one place to another, right? Uh, the soil, the air, uh, these are all mechanical vectors considered to be parasitic. Okay. Um, another set of terms also of quite uh, importance in understanding the life cycle of the uh, parasites. Uh, is host. Host, perhaps we mentioned it a couple of times uh, by now. Uh, these are the, the organism or the, the animal that harbors, means carries the parasite. It may, may or may not show symptom. The presence of parasite may implicate disease or may not. It may just stay there. Uh, Mutually live, I mean, uh, take uh, foods and, and uh, shelter without causing harm, or sometimes can cause harm, or it doesn't cause anything. No loss, no gain. The mom had perhaps the doctor of the terms in the introduction, can it have the microbiology symbiosis or synergies? Um, what? Uh, differences were intermediate. Most parasites reach maturity. Maturity in the whole place, it can cause disease. If you cannot have the parasite in the kinds that it make disease, then the definitive host is important for development of the parasite to become an adult. Adult, which is the stage that can reproduce sexually with the can cause the pathogenesis. Okay, before then, before it matures into an adult, <laughs> rarely it will implicate. Yeah. All right, so this is called the definitive host. Uh, definitive host is also um, uh, critical for the uh, completion of the life cycle, so it will not mature into adult. Um, if it not uh, uh, transmits into the definitive host. Intermediate, a host that harbors the parasite only for time of the life cycle, all right? So it does not complete the whole cycle inside. It can do that in the definitive host, but intermediate is just part of the life cycle. All right, so for a short period of time during which developmental stage takes place. It is a required host in the life cycle. So it's not the whole life cycle, it's just only part, maybe one stage or two stages, and then it has to go to the definitive host. Definitive host is the one where the parasite will develop into the adult stage, and the adult stage is the one that causes the disease. Um, so, and, and then there is the last one, it's called a reservoir host. A reservoir, and it's a mustauda or al khazin, yeah, the makan, the bitugro feel the parasite just multiply. Tamam? Yeah, just to continue the parasite life cycle, it multiplies there um, with more, yeah, mainly without implicating in disease. Uh, eventually, a host, if it doesn't suffer disease, it will not يعني, die, for example, it will stay. So it's kind of support the presence of the parasite in the, in the life cycle. Uh, well, I can just multiplication. Usually there is no uh, development mm -hmm. or uh, transfer from one stage to another in the life cycle. And the mic is closed. Okay. 
الباراسايت طبعا ان جنرال كلاسيفايد انتو ثري ميجر كاتيجوري اللي which انا I, i will i try to mute from my side على اساس بس تكون ال انا اعرف من فادي participants فاذا اني على اساس انه ما يصير accidentally يتفك المايك من عندكم ويكون في interruption للصوت بس still you have the choice to unmute or ask if you want Uh, so I was saying there are three, there are three categories of the, uh, of the parasites. First one is the uh, protozoa, uh, which is the one that we're describing today. Protozoa means um, the kind of parasite that's composed of one cell. So it's a single celled uh, microorganism, like bacteria, or fungi, and so on. Tamam. Uh, A name protozoa comes from the uh, proto and zoa. And proto mean primitive, you know, something very bidai, يعني, something very simple. Um, and zoa is an animal, uh, so it is somehow can translate to primitive animal. And it was once considered to be, you know, the first form of life. Um, the second uh, categories. Helminths. Helminths means worms. Worms, uh, multicellular parasites, means it's almost like a full animal. It has a um, full system. Some of them, they have a, a GI system, a reproductive system, fully mature. So it's kind of uh, like a small animal. And some of them, as you can, uh, perhaps you know already, you can, you can see it. They are visible to the naked eye. So it's quite big. But I had a and there are three types, uh, nematodes, cystodes, trematodes. Uh, we'll leave it until uh, the second session, we'll cover those. Ectoparasites, uh, again, also they are multicellular, and these are the ones that live outside the host. Uh, so helminths and protozoa live inside the host, ectoparasite outside. And this is, of course, or will the arthropods, which is مفصليات يعني all ال insects اللي it has um, joints تمام arthro from arthritis joints uh, فهذه it, it involve all ال insects insects are very important في ال في lifestyle of parasite in general uh, some of them they can act as a parasite themselves Um, you will see her uh, here uh, the last of the uh, of the pathogenic. Just how this is just a, yeah, a few examples of the pathogenic protozoa: intestinal um, intermeba hostilitica. So this is amoeba, and this can refer to the shape of the parasite. Uh, giardia, uh, lamblia. This is flagellated uh, protozoa. Sorry, and then Cryptosporidium barbum, uh, as, the, as the name indicates, spores. Uh, if you remember the bacteria spores, the kind of uh, an organism that form uh, a shell, a big shell, It looks like a seed, like a plant seed. And uh, so these are intestinal, mainly implicated in GI, uh, GI manifestation, as we will see. I think we will cover uh, those three. And then there is one urogenital protozoa, and then uh, several example of uh, blood uh, protozoa. And today we will cover plasmodium, which is the one that uh, caused malaria. Uh, Toxoplasma gondii, which is the one that caused the um, disease related or transmitted by cats. And then trypanosoma, uh, also another disease transmitted Uh, and the same goes for Lishmania. حاولت أشوف يعني ترجمة باللغة العربية للتريبانسوم والليشمانيا. الليشمانيا it will just turn as Lishmania. 
Ribonosoma is a very weird name. Yani. I'm not sure if it will help to, uh, it doesn't indicate like any characteristic feature or, uh, or the form of disease they cause. So um, uh, we will just call them as they are. Uh, so I start with intestine. Uh, we will not go extensively. It will be a very brief uh, statement about each of those uh, three intestinal protozoa. Um, you will see a lot of details in the life cycle, which uh, for me, I will not uh, consider it in, uh, in the whatever form of the assessment. Um, but I, I, I can guarantee for the other uh, faculties who also participate in, or may participate in making questions. Um, all these uh, three form of uh, intestinal protozoa, uh, they have all in common that they cause diarrhea. Right, so um, uh, passing of watery, loose um, fecal material is somehow a common feature, perhaps of all intestinal protozoa, not only uh, those three examples. So let's start with the first one. First, uh, intermediate histolytic case by far is the commonest among all intestinal uh, uh, parasites. Um, the disease they cause, it's called amoebiasis. And amoeba is uh, a term that refer or it's kind of characterize uh, the, um, the shape of the, uh, of the parasite. It is transmitted by consumption of contaminated food uh, or water. Uh, and, and that will be contaminated with fecal materials of someone with intermoeba hostilitica uh, infection already. Uh, it's important to realize that the infective stage is called cyst, uh, which is the one that you will, will see under the microscope in this in this tube. Uh, so this is infective stage because there is another um, uh, stage which is called the reproductive or the active stage called trophozoite. Um, common in developing countries or common in, in all places where there is um, poor sanitation. Yani, let me come for a mix between sanitation or water supply. Uh, usually, it will become a problem. But usually, it's not well developed in developing countries. Um, uh, symptoms often mild. I mean, maybe you 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 get it and you uh, you just recover spontaneously and you have you have just nothing happen. Um, it will not, it wouldn't be something that will uh, prompt you to, to seek medical attention. Um, however, there is a, a severe form or somehow like a more pathogenic form of the infection. It's called amoebic dysentery. Okay, amoebic dysentery, uh, this is an invasive form of entamoeba hysteritica. So if you have entamoeba hysteritica stays in the GI system, it will be fine. There will be no problem. Okay, all the just the common um, GI problems with bloody. Okay, uh, this is uh, something unique, perhaps among uh, the uh, intestinal uh, parasite. Bloody stools means um, usually that it uh, started to uh, make holes in the uh, in the GI tract, uh, and then that's the what will bring uh, the blood. So it's kind of uh, it goes beyond the lining of the uh, uh, the first layer of the cell lining the GI or the intestine, and it goes beyond to the blood supply uh, behind, and that's what make uh, the blood to appear on the uh, on the stool, um, as well as fever, uh, because it's also indicated that the uh, whether the uh, the parasite perhaps has entered the bloodstream, and mostly. Uh, more severe if it, um, it arrived to the liver and there it will make liver or hepatic abscess. All right, so this is kind of invasive uh, stage of the uh, intermediate hysteritic, which may not all the time happen. All right, it's quite rare, but if it happens, it's quite serious. Um, the the uh, trophozoid, so we'll see it in the life cycle, trophozoid um, and the uh, the sister stage, uh, perhaps better to look at it here. So this is the life cycle. Some of the life cycle of the, uh, of the parasite today are quite uh, easy and straightforward like this one. 
and there will be some complicated uh, uh, in the uh, in the uh, systemic uh, parasite. So it starts by ingestion of the uh, food or water contaminated with the cyst of the Intamoeba hostilitica, and then it goes down the GI system where the cyst will transform into trophozoid. So cyst is like a cyst, you know, the bladder, as you say, shabha bladder. Formation of trophozoid. Trophozoid, trophy means the, the nutrition. Zoid is animal, so it is the stage where the um, this parasite replicates and gets food. Uh, it had a lot of demand on nutrition, trophozoids, okay? Uh, so the cyst become trophozoid, and the trophozoid is the one that it will penetrate the intestinal wall, right? And then it goes to the bloodstream from there to the liver. And that's the uh, systematic invasion. It uh, may lead to a formation of liver abscess. And this is the severe form of uh, amoebiasis. Um, then the trophozoite will uh, form the cyst, which is the one that will be passed with the stool. And then you can see it uh, in the um, as the diagnostic stage. Okay, it's the one that will aid you in the diagnostic. Mostly, you will uh, rarely you will see the uh, non-infective non stage trophozoite. If you ingest trophozoite, you will not. Get infection. So the infective stage is um, cyst. To get the disease, you must uh, ingest the cyst, not the trophozoid. Um, here are the shapes. If you want uh, uh, to kind of see in comparison how they look, uh, there are a lot of details here. But since it's not described here, I will not uh, go about. So it goes cyst, trophozoid, and then cyst. So this is an active form. This is the one that replicates and gets nutrition and so on. Cyst is the resting state, okay? So it's uh, rested until it gets into uh, the host. Uh, as I said, the, the cyst is the infective and diagnostic stage when you see it in the uh, fecal materials. And this is the cyst and this is trophozoid. Um, it uh, indicates that the, um, the individual is uh, infected with uh, with intimate histolytica and it, in, in most of the time it warrant uh, anti um, protozoal treatments so that to prevent the, uh, the likelihood of invasion. Uh, brief uh, comparison, trophozoite is motile, active because it replicates and gets, um, uh, gets nutrition. Fragile, this means that it's not uh, quite resistant to the environmental um, factors so it can uh, be, um, it can die quite quickly. Infective, non-infective, but in most of the time, it is considered to be non-infective stage, all right? Cyst is not mutile, resting, as I said, resistance, because it has a thick cell wall, so it can resist um, relatively better than the trophozoites, the uh, environmental factor, and it is the infective uh, stage. So that's all about Intamoeba hostilitica. Um, now moves to the uh, moving to the next one, which is Giardia lamblia and the disease called Giardiasis. Um, again, the aerial disease, uh, same as Intamoeba hostilitica, it's usually associated with contaminated water supply. Usually it, it happens as outbreak. Uh, if there is an outbreak in the city and all of a sudden all people come to the hospital complaining of uh, the aerial symptoms, um, usually the government or the city, the Baladia, they will go and um, uh, examine the water supply. And particularly, in certain areas of the city, they start to complain of uh, frequent diarrheal disease, then they, they, it's kind of warrant um, a epidemiological study where they go and they sample the uh, water supply and see that there's no mix between the uh, sanitary and uh, water if it happens, usually GRD will be one of the implicated one, along with the second one that we will uh, come right after. So uh, contaminated water, most common. Um, uh, the symptoms still, there is there is no, nothing unique here, as the, for example, the blood in the uh, Intamoeba hostilitica. Um, perhaps greasy stool, maybe something quite um, uh, characteristic. Um, uh, but nothing else. Um, usually it affects people who camp a lot because um, 
particularly when they need to um, consume water from the lakes or from the river nearby. Uh, these are if they need to, if they run out of water supply and they go and you drink from the uh, river or the lakes. Uh, so this will be a, uh, um, a very easy um, way of contracting Giardia lambda. All right, so um, yeah, sometimes called campers, all right? So when you camp a lot uh, and you get contaminated water, then uh, Giardia lambda will, uh, will be a very common one. Um, details of the life cycle here for me, I would not, I, I don't care much about um, the form, but usually for these are quite easy. Just from it, it uh, you get cyst, transform into trophozoid, replicate, and then give cysts back. And this is the one that will be passed down the stool, it contaminate another food of another person, and then it, the cycle goes back. So it's relatively easy. Uh, the cyst, trophozoid, cyst. Uh, so it's infective stage again is assessed and the result is the active multiplying stage which is multiplying the uh, intestine. Diagnosis again by seeing the trophozoites or the cysts in the uh, uh, fecal materials is quite characteristic because it's flagellated. All right, so very easy to spot, very easy to, uh, uh, to um, recognize uh, it has flagellated because if you remember the um, uh, intermebia solitica was amoeba. Okay, amoeba it has a kind of unusual shape, uh, extended um, part at the filtrophozoid usually because it's motile. Hena flagellate, tamam. Well, fatha crypto spores. Right? Each one has a unique uh, features, and these are the minimum things that you have. You, you never want to miss in you know, to realize or recognize these unique things uh, in the shape and in the. Uh, mode of transmission and in the uh, manifestation. There's something unique about manifestation that they cause. These three things are the minimum things that you guarantee you can answer any uh, potential question in the, in the assessment. The, la the third one of the intestinal um, uh, protozoa is called cryptosporidium. As the name indicates, it forms spores, all right? If you remember spores, spores are the um, uh, kind of very thick shell, it looks like a plant seed. Um, again, diarrheal disease, contaminated water, same as with the uh, with uh, Giardia. So this is also uh, associated with contamination of water supply. All right, so it will result in in outbreaks in uh, in areas or cities where the uh, the contamination or the mix happened between the sanitation and water supply. Uh, symptoms, uh, nothing uh, unique that I can recognize. Um, all the typical feature of um, uh, GI infection. Here is the unique things about cryptosporidium. It's mostly people with weakened immune system who are at risk or more risk than others to be uh, or to show a symptom from cryptosporidium, all right? So it's somehow you can think about it as opportunistic uh, infection. Um, so what happened uh, mostly, uh, if, you, if you, for example, get a question in a form of a case or a small case, <clears throat> and you, um, it was a patient who was uh, showing uh, a sign of uh, like a diarrheal disease, or, that seems it goes for long and treated. And um, it, it, it tells you that this patient has a weakened immune system. Usually, usually, HIV patients, they will, at certain yeah, any time in their life, uh, they, will, they will contract cryptosporidium. So it's very common among HIV patients. If you saw they are a disease, HIV patient, right away, think about uh, cryptosporidium, all right? Cryptosporidium. Um, there are species, but uh, let's just remember the, um, the, the, the uh, this family is Cryptosporidium, very common among HIV patients or in general a patient with weak immune system. Um, mostly healthy individual may not uh, suffer from uh, Cryptosporidium. Uh, the life cycle is similarly also close to the, uh, but it's not trophozoic cyst, but here it will be 
It's called oocyst. Uh, it's like it's a cyst. Inside it, there is an egg. Something looks like an egg, all right? So it's uh, containing sporozoid. So zoid, again, is animal sporo is animal that's able to form spores, right? Uh, so you get this spore containing eggs, come on, uh, ingested, and then in the, in the intestine, those thick shell will dissolve, and then the egg, the, 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 um, the, uh, the sporozoid inside will release, and then they will continue the life cycle. The same as if you remember the, uh, the bacteria that's able to form spores, they can stay dormant in the soil until uh, it is ingested by hosts, uh, exposed to water, nutrition, then they will sporulate. And the, the fake shell or the seed will, um, will be dissolved and then it will continue. Same as a seed plant, you put the plant the seed, you can store it indefinitely. And then once you expose it to water, they will sporulate and start to grow. Uh, so here, just remember the name, oocyst. Uh, it's a cyst containing uh, eggs. Um, and then, you know, existation. This is the term that refers to the um, uh, dissol dissolution of the thick uh, shell. And then the sporozoids will be released and will develop. And then again, go back to uh, oocyst. So the same, but there is... Uh, some uh, stages in the middle. So uh, so sporozoids, trophozoids, so they will then replicate. I don't care about the merozoids, but usually I will care more about the oocyst because it is the infective as well as the diagnostic stage, okay? Um, and what comes out of it, which is the sporozoid. Uh, again, I wouldn't uh, focus on these names, but uh, again, uh, if, uh, any other faculties provide questions on this um, so that you are ready. But for me, all these details of the life cycle, uh, absolutely, I will not look at it. Uh, diagnosis, uh, again, you will see the, uh, or recognize the, um, the parasite or the cyst, the oocyst in the fecal materials. Remember, because it's a spore forming, it has a thick, uh, cell wall, usually if you want to stain it, then it has to be stained by acid fast stain. Remember mycobacteria, tuberculosis, the same. It has thick cell wall. I mean, the, the conventional stain will not penetrate the thick cell wall. So you need something uh, very uh, strong, which is the in the form of acid fast stain. Well, if you look, it, it looks like the mycobacteria. Um, blue background uh, and, and, and the bacteria or the micro or the uh, the protozoa or the microorganism stain purple or pink to purple dark purple all right so the acid fast stain remember because it's for the thick instant anything thick it has to be stained by uh, kind of harsh stain that is quite strong in, enough to penetrate the uh, thick cell wall um the last of the uh um, and uh, so, so those the three are the intestinal protozoa, and now the uh, the urogenital. Um, and this is this one caused the disease is called trichomoniasis because the uh, the species is called Trichomonas vaginalis. Trichomonas vaginalis is the cause of, or it's considered to be one of the sexual transmitted disease. All right, so it's not an intestinal, it's urogenital, and it's implicated in. Uh, sexual transmitted disease. Uh, there are not much details here. It just perhaps that's what I, all you need to remember that it's a causative agent of uh, sexual transmitted disease, um, not an intestinal. All right. Uh, perhaps there won't there won't be enough time to cover all the um, the four um, blood parasites, but we'll see until. Until then, there's a time where we go. Malaria is is one of the important one because it's the um, malaria is, is a very big problem on the whole uh, planet. One of the one of the uh, major uh, infectious disease problem, um, along with HIV, mycobacterium tuberculosis, hepatitis, and so on. Uh, so Plasmodium falciparum uh, is the uh, most dangerous one, like most pathogenic one. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the family is called Plasmodium, 
this is the uh, refers to the um, the kind of parasites. Mosquito porn, so it's transmitted by the bites of mosquitoes. All right, and you can see the sta the, the statistics how um, most of it is in in Africa and is, is mortality rate is very high. Um, uh, is is very big problem. Uh, perhaps not here, but in many parts of the world still, it's a big problem. Um, symptoms usually start mild and then get severe. Uh, this is very uh, likely, particularly if there is no um, sufficient uh, treatment. The fever usually, it's, uh, it, it comes with shells. Uh, usually it's a shilling fever. Um, if untreated, usually uh, it will lead to severe complication and death. <clears throat> Transmission is bites uh, by female anopheles. So I think it's remember to, um, or important to remember the name. So this one is called anopheles uh, mosquito. Usually it is infected. So it carries the infective stage. When it's come and bite you and feed on your blood, then it will uh, inject uh, the, uh, the parasite. Um, there are four species. Falciparum, as I said, is the most dangerous, but not the most common. The most common is Vivax, 80% of the cases, but it's quite milder than Falciparum, slow mortality rate. Um, Plasmodium malaria and uh, Plasmodium ovale, um, those two are not quite common and usually are not as pathogenic as um, uh, these two, Falciparum and Vivax. Um, life cycle, it, there are a lot of details here. It's um, it, it just a repetition of what's written here. Uh, the important thing is to remember is this here, the infective stage, how you get the infection by the bite of the mosquito. It injects the sporozoids. I'm not sure about the names if you need to, but if I would advise you, at least the um, uh, these two, sporozoid is the one that you will get infected with, and the gametocytes, the one that will be taken back by the mosquito uh, to complete the life cycle. So these two are the, I would consider the minimum. So what happened from the injection site, it will go to the liver, all right? From the liver, it will be released to the bloodstream and it will go and infect red blood cells, all right? So this is the target. Uh, type of cell where malaria will infect, all right? So it will go and infect red blood cells. It will multiply and then uh, it, it, I, merozoids is just nothing uh, other than um, a form or a stage of the, of the parasite. <clears throat> Eventually it will burst, the RBC will burst, uh, and then the, the uh, whatever inside the RBC will mature into gametocytes, all right? This is the uh, the, the sexual stage that will go to the um, female uh, mosquito and then it will um, continue the life cycle there, right? So it's very important that the female mosquito gets the gametocytes and it's very important to give uh, the right uh, stage that uh, you can um, uh, allow the life cycle of the, uh, of the parasite to proceed. So it's very important, remember, injection, liver, RBCs, and then maturation, and then again, uh, gametocyte to, uh, so if you look at it just by these simple uh, schematics without even memorizing or knowing what's inside these boxes, just scan injection, liver, RBCs, and then release back to the, uh, to the mosquito. All right, so that's for me the life cycle if I'm going to ask about. Uh, diagnosis by blood smear because it's inside the RBC, so you can easily spot it under microscope. You do blood film, you look at it, and you see the these kind of dark blue or purple uh, dots inside uh, the um, the uh, the red blood cells. And each stage, or each uh, sorry, each um, yes, each stage as well as each species among the four has different. Uh, morphology. So once you look at the macro microscope, you can right away tell which one of the four is falciparum or vivax or um, the, the other two. Um, and that will be quite important to uh, recognize the species so that you know if it's serious or not and you know um, how um, um, 
the, determine the, the course of the, uh, of, the, of the treatment. Okay, so that's about malaria. Uh, the second one is called toxoblasmosis. So this is the disease and the, uh, the causative agent is called toxoblasma gondii. Um, it's a more uh, because it is transmitted to human by this host is, is considered to be an intermediate host, um, the, uh, the cat, all right? Um, it is quite common disease, uh, but I will tell you when or where uh, or what uh, category of individual who uh, this might be of a problem. Um, so transmission, uh, the cat's definitive uh, host will uh, shed, the, oh, sorry, I said intermediate, it's a, def it's a definitive host. Um, the, the, bird, the bird and, and rats, I guess, will be the, uh, we'll see in the life cycle in the next uh, slide. Um, it should all assessed, okay, so this is the infective stage. Um, uh, and then, Usually, how it is transmitted to a human is by consumption um, of raw, undercooked meat, blood uh, transfusion from someone who is already infected, because this is a parasite that uh, will will be in the bloodstream, or in the transplacenta, all right, from the infected mother to the fetus, and this is very serious for. And this is actually the uh, the people who are mostly will suffer from the severe complication of Toxoplasma gondii. So usually no symptom in healthy individuals, it can go um, unnoticed. Um, it may cause kind of uh, flu-like symptoms, mild uh, symptoms, but it may resolve spontaneously, except if immunocompromised. The, the most important people, uh, they always um, at risk of severe complication of Toxoplasma gondii or Toxoplasmosis, pregnant women, um, usually, out in in, in, uh, <clears throat> in cultures and in in Western, usually cats and uh, usually it's a it's a it is a part of the family, right? It's a pet. Uh, most of homes have some sort of pets, and cats can be common. And pregnant women usually advised if they have cats at home during pregnancy, they stay away from cats. They stay uh, try to minimize contact with cats. Um, they get their cats checked clinically. They go and, and, and check their stool, whether they have the parasite or not. And if they have, they have to be treated or they have to be taken away from the pregnant woman. Um, uh, if the cat is sick, if the cat is showing symptoms, uh, because sometimes they do. Uh, so these are really a problem for pregnant women, all right? First, it may affect the um, the mother and the fetus as well. So if the infection happens during pregnancy, the fetus will be infected, and usually there will be miscarriage. يعني حيصل الجهاز وحي يطلع ال ال الفيتس. لو ما طلع يعني لو مش الحال و the fetus continue the uh, the maturation and uh, and uh, was born, then there is a chances that the fetus will be um, uh, abnormally formed, either um, anatomically or functionally. Mumkin uh, disabled. Uh, movement uh, <clears throat> disabilities or uh, something quite severe, right? Um, as you can see here, uh, abnormal enlargement or smalls of the head. This can indication that there will be some sort of severe mental retardation. Okay, so pregnant woman of toxoplasma right away when you see it in a, in a, in a case, uh, link it right away. Pregnant woman, uh, cat, toxoplasma. Okay, the, the three goes together. Life cycle, I wouldn't care much of the life cycle because here this life cycle becomes uh, a bit complicated. So the cat uh, releases the osis and it goes to the... Uh, um, uh, consumed by rats and uh, birds, which then, you know, it's kind of the, the definitive life cycle here. But then accidentally, the osis may transmit to human or to animal, and then the human will consume undercooked animal where the parasites actually will be in their meats. 
okay, because it's, it is invasive form of a parasite or sometimes transfusion if the, um, from infected to uninfected individuals. I wouldn't care much about um, these cycles except just knowing the infective stage or assess uh, the infective stage and how people get infected by consumption of uh, undercooked foods, transfusion, or contaminated food, all right? So the, the, the way of transmission of infection, uh, contaminated food, undercooked uh, meat, and transfusion. Everything else uh, is extra, at least for me. Diagnosis, uh, you look at the, um, you can see the toxoplasm going in the bloodstream, uh, like a blood film, same as malaria. And they can also do it with uh, immunoassay-based um, techniques. The third is called uh, trypanosoma. Trypanosomiasis is the disease. There is two types, African and American uh, trypanosomiasis. The African trypanosomiasis, um, Somiasis, it's called sleeping sickness because it actually makes you super sleepy. Uh, but it's not just the normal sleep. It's sleepy because there's a problem in the brain. Eventually, it, it will lead to death. Uh, so it's chronic, eventually fatal, um, African sleeping. And in the American, it's called Chagas disease, as we will see in the uh, second, um, the next slide. Trypanosoma bruzi, all right, or gambianzi. Uh, you, you need to remember, I think, the name. Uh, this is the African trypanosoma bruzi gambianzi or bruzi rhodiensis, rod, rod, uh, rhodiensis, rod, rhodiensis, all right. I, I forget how to pronounce this. Rod, rhodiensis, so rhodiensis. Anyway, these two, um, it depends on where, which part of Africa. And I, I, uh, I remember one in the north, one in the south, or west, uh, east. I, I don't remember which is which. But um, two species, Brucey, Gambiensi, or Rodiensi, um, uh, those are the African. So how, the, how you get the disease? By uh, pites of um, uh, contaminated fly called C. C. fly. And also, you need to remember the name. In the malaria, it was Anophilus here, C. C. fly, right? Uh, inject, you get primary lesion at the site of injection, but the problem is when the parasite goes to the lymphatic system and then to the bloodstream. And then, of course, they will mature into the adult stage. You can see it in the bloodstream. Very big, very characteristic, easy to spot, easy to identify. All right, so the first stage. And then the second stage is the serious one when it invades the central nervous system, produce toxin and potent inflammatory response, all right? Uh, so you start to get lethargy, tired, uh, exhausted, eventually continuous sleep. You just can't, it's not the sleep that you can overcome. You just all of a sudden staying, talking with your friends and all of a sudden you nodded off, all right? You just, you fell asleep. So that's, that's the problem. Uh, of course, that will indicate that there's a shutdown of the central nervous system uh, component that are um, required to stay alert. All right. Uh, eventually, it's, it start. Then it will it will trans um, spread to other vital regions that control the vital functions like heartbeats and uh, uh, oxygenation and so on. Uh, so that was the African. The American is uh, the species called Tyrannosoma cruzi. All right. Trypanosoma cruzi is the American one. The disease is called Chagas disease, all right? Chagas disease, um, one of the uh, key signs is in a swelling in, the, uh, in one of the eyes. Um, so what happens, uh, again, transmitted by the insect, uh, cause cardiomyopathies because it's, uh, it's, it's invasiveness. Uh, so that uh, the, uh, the African goes to the brain, this one goes to the um, uh, to the cardiac muscle and then form cardiac problem. Um, so it's called Chagas disease. Um, diagnosis again, same by uh, blood film. You can see it's uh, uh, very uh, characteristic. There is a differences in the shape. We can identify between African and American, right, from the uh, uh, bloodstream, but this is uh, unnecessary details. <clears throat> um, all right, so as simple as this, uh, remember the species, 
the name of the species, the name of the disease, and where it is manifesting in the CNS versus the uh, cardiac uh, muscle. Um, a lot of details life cycle. For me, again, only the infective stage, what gets inside and what gets out, all right? Everything else, the life cycle in, inside the CC, I don't care about, I care about what happened in human, all right? You get form and then it gets to the adult form, okay? That's all. Um, so remember the name of the stage that you get from the fly and the, the, where it matures, matures to what form. That's it, what happened inside the CC is not important for me. Last one, Lishmania. Okay, Lishmania is invasive infection also, affect the, um, uh, the, the um, uh, cutaneous uh, form. So it's kind of, uh, it, it can be on uh, as cutaneous or invasive, it goes inside, but all start in the skin, right? At the site where the um, pines happen. So it is uh, transmitted by sand fly, so the, the fly here is called sand fly. So you get the bites, you get a lesion in the, um, in the cutaneous tissue. And then from there, it uh, invades into visceral, all right? So we have cutaneous leishmania and visceral leishmania. Make sure it goes inside to the visceral uh, tissue, um, anywhere from the you know, spleen, liver, bone marrow, liver, anywhere. It just gets inside. Uh, there's no um, limits where they can go. All right, so skin and viscera are the complication of the leishmania. Uh, sand fly is the one that um, uh, transmits and there are dogs and rodents can be a reservoir. And this is an, a very long, it, it, it takes life. I mean, the infection stay for long, very long uh, to be even started to uh, manifest as a lesion. Life cycle, you get the uh, promastigotes uh, Promastigotes from the uh, from the flies, it will then taken up by the macrophages. So this is an intracellular uh, one, intracellular parasite that is taken up by the macrophages uh, in the cutaneous tissues and then goes to the uh, <clears throat> uh, to the invasive uh, to the inside of the of the way. So it can manifest here at the site of uh, injection and of course it can goes uh, systemic. Okay, and here is the, just explain the same thing. Diagnosis, we see the um, uh, intracellular, see, so this is the macrophages, and you can see the parasites inside. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, it's inside, marbricate inside. So this means that it has a mechanism to resist uh, phagocytic killing, all right? Um, and you get the sample either by scraping of the skin lesion, or if it's visceral, you get biopsy from whatever um, organ is inf uh, infected. Okay, so um, that's come to the end of uh, the session. Um, if you, uh, I think it was tight, it was kind of a little bit dense, um, but if you have any question, maybe there's no time for a question now, but if you have, you can, uh, you can email, you can, I don't know what other, uh, other form, if you want to use Teams, whatever program you want to use, um, I'll try to.